Hello everyone. Um, I wanted to make this video because again I was speaking to a, a person that a uh, wonderful, wonderful, precious person and they told me again, reminded me of uh, this uh, belief system called uh, Christ Consciousness. So I wanted to speak into this a little bit because it's so uh, important to know the truth and I know many of you that are involved in this, uh, you know, trying to get enlightenment and, and, and um, have Christ Consciousness. Um, are doing it because you're hungry for the spiritual, you're hungry to know, to be awakened, to be free. Um, so everything I'm going to say, I'm just going to tell you the truth because I've been involved to do with the spiritual for a long time now. And I've seen some crazy things, weird things, um, uh, many th things that were endangering people um, in the spiritual side of things when they were just innocently or with a, in a sense, in, in one sense, a pure heart trying to uh, find the path to enlightenment or, uh, you know, connect to the, to the divine, as they would say, you know, or the force or the universe, as they would say, um, but ended up uh, going into a place of um, they needed real spiritual help because of what happened from that journey. And it doesn't happen immediately. It happens slowly. So I wanted to speak into this a little bit because I don't see much places where they're talking about this. And so if it's you, please hear me to the end. Understand that I'm not anything against a you as a person, um, but I want you to know the truth because the truth makes us free, truly free. So please hear me and why I'm going to say what I'm going to say uh, to the end, if you will. OK, so um, let me get to the second screen now. Don't react to this. Uh, so the Christ consciousness deception. Now, I'm going to just let please hear me out to the end then decide what you want to decide. But I call it a deception because I believe there's a counterfeit version of having Christ consciousness. So I don't dismiss that, but there is the counterfeit version. And the way it sounds, it's also a deceptive way of saying it. Um, and so I'm going to get into it by first saying just a summary of what um, it is. And I'll also go to some pages, a couple of pages where I... Um, basically I'll read off what they're claiming it is um, and maybe you're that's what you believed it is because you've been in these websites as well so let me get there as uh, just to say it right now so what is Christ consciousness belief what is this belief it is the belief that we all have the divine nature within us already so all, every human being has that and through meditation we can achieve enlightenment or be awakened to this reality as we allow through meditation, so through meditation, we allow our chakras to be open from the bottom up, from stage to stage, in other words, to level to level it goes. Like you see in the picture, you know, it's level to level, stages to stage, until the third eye is open. So that, see the other picture there with the third eye? There's other um, images of that eye, meaning there's a third eye here, it opens up, and it's just like symbolic, um, because spiritually they believe that the third eye opens up. Uh, to truly see and become one with the divine and uh, divine nature. So it's a path to be enlightened to enlightenment. And this is uh, the way to to get there through meditation. Uh, and so I'll go to the next one. Sorry, let me read you some of the articles that also speak into it a little bit so you can have a clear understanding. And then I'll speak into the the truth behind this. And I'll tell you why it's the truth later. OK, so please stand with me. Um, anyway, so what is spiritual consciousness? This is part, one of the websites. I'm not going to name the websites, but this is uh, popular websites, a couple of them. So what is Christ consciousness? They had a title there and it says spiritual thoughts that enter into conscious minds are sometimes referred to as Christ consciousness. It is an awareness of the higher self as part of the higher universal system. It does not relate to the personality of Christ. Christ, notice what he just said, does not relate to the personality of Christ. Christ consciousness is a state of mind. It is an understanding that there is a universal and omnipotent force everywhere and connecting with this higher power. So it's about connecting with this higher power that is everywhere. Another explanation of Christ consciousness is a sense of being present in humanity. That's some quote there. Number two, they said, how is it, uh, how is it likened to religious beliefs? The term is not necessarily affiliated to any religious beliefs. It was named after Jesus Christ's spiritual elevation during his mortal life. Anybody can become Christ conscious. 
if they are open to the concept and seek to obtain this awareness and consciousness. This is what they're saying. And again, I'll break it down. Of course, you'll be listening now. And if you've been involved in this, you've been thinking, what's wrong with that? I'll explain, okay, um, how, we, how this all works in a, in a minute. And you can take all the information. Now you've heard this side, you've heard that side, and you can decide whatever you want for your life. <clears throat> um, most religious masters have walked in a path of love, light, peace, harmony, and bliss, generally following a period of suffering, becoming enlightened along their journey. Sounds nice. It's about love, light, peace, harmony, and bliss. This is not unique to any one of the prescribed religions, instead being a common theme among, amongst many belief groups. All people are capable of this enlightenment and awareness by opening their mind to higher possibilities. This is Christ consciousness. So that's what they're claiming is Christ consciousness. Number three in this website it said, how do, how do people become Christ conscious? Consciousness can flow into a person if there, uh, if there is the will and capacity to receive it. In other words, you've got to be open-minded to it. <clears throat> the ability to maintain it and the understanding to nurture it. The idea is to find the spiritual way, whether this be assisted by religious beliefs, mentors, guides, in, in, intuition, or by inner reflection. The aim is for people to become more loving, compassionate, tolerant, patient, forgiving, understanding, and content by following a new way of conscious thinking. The means by which one achieves this is not important. Again, sounds very nice, but I'm going to explain some stuff in a second, okay? Um, let me just write something down. Okay. Okay, let me continue. So, it says, um, spiritual growth is obtained by aligning the, with inner thoughts and feelings. One should set the intention to become aware whilst understanding that they are a unique creation within the completeness of the whole. The human mind acknowledges the divine mind, gradually awakening with Christ's consciousness to become more enlightened with a greater understanding of the higher forces operating all around. That was one website, the gist of what they were claiming Christ consciousness is and how you attain it. Um, another website said, is Christ consciousness Christian? Do I have to be Christian to achieve Christ consciousness? And the highest, and it's, then it says, the highest state of intellectual development and emotional maturity is sometimes termed the Christed state, state because it represents the sacredness and purity of the individual who has achieved it. Jesus achieved this in his human life and was given this term as part of his name as the recognition of his achievement of this spiritual status. This path is open to anyone regardless of their religious tradition. Notice what it says there. It, uh, if and when we are open to become a living vessel of love, truth and goodness on the planet and actively strive to attain it. So again, sounds very good. Uh, like it's a good thing, but it also keeps putting Jesus as some kind of side thing where he just achieved this as well. So yeah, we follow what he achieved, but he's not, don't worry about everything else he said, basically. So I'll continue. This is not a term used exclusively in the Christian religion, nor does it mean that you must adhere or give in to the Christian belief system to attain this state. Okay, so reject it. The, you don't have to follow the Christian belief system, but uh, pick and choose the things that you like about Christ, and that's it, you know. All of the world's religions, traditions, offer a path to achieve achieving this Christed status. And people are free to find their way in the context of their religious choice. What is significant to remember here is that we all uh, have our own unique journeys to finding deity. Uh, our indwelling spirits encourage us to grow organically upon our own paths. Sometimes people find their way within the context of certain beliefs that the major world's religion offer. Some people will find their way by blending some beliefs together in a unique and innovative way. All ways and paths are honored if they lead to a person into becoming more loving, forgiving, patient, kind, compassionate. Again, sounds really good and happy. All paths of love lead to the same divine source of, the, um, of all that exists. Now, that's a very big um, statement acting like it's factual. That's what happens where they cannot prove this. But they, it's very much talking like this is how you need to do it. You just have to be open-minded. You can go any way you want. You don't have to follow Christ's teachings. Uh, just look at what he accomplished. So you became the Christ. 
Um, so therefore, you can also follow the path of love, peace, like Jesus did. Um, it doesn't matter what you know what belief system you have, um, as long as you achieve, because all sources go to the source. All of us go to the source through any way or path you take. All these kind of um, fundamental stuff that if they're throwing at us while it's writing all this, um, claiming that that's being open-minded. But this is a factual statement that they can't prove. They're just saying, they're speaking like it is. Facts. We all share the same deity, creator, parent, source as an individual expression of that source personality. We are all moving towards unification with our source. Christ consciousness is the state of awareness of our true nature, our higher self, and our birthright as children of God. Christ consciousness is our living expression as children of, of spirit, revealing and sharing our own divine life plans to manifest upon the, the earth uh, plane, building heaven to earth. Living in the reality of our Christed self is actually being fully alive and invested in who we truly are. In our Christed self, we live in inspiration for others to seek this for themselves so we can collectively move our planet forward into the divine plan for planetary transformation and glorification. Again, sounds ooh, you know, very good, very alluring. But um, I need to be honest with you now and tell you what's going on here um, with this teaching that's been around for many years. And please, again, hear me out and then do as you wish. Um, many of the things that you're hearing from that passage, from those uh, um, introduction to Christ consciousness belief system or path, uh, what it does is it has... You know, rat poison is 99.9%, .9%, most of them, are 99.9% .9 good food. It's actually good food inside. It's 1%, 0.1% poison mixed in with the good food that makes it dangerous, makes it deadly, makes it harmful. And that's how Satan works. So Satan doesn't come always to people going, ah, I'm Satan, follow my path. It has to look alluring. It has to look good. It has to sound good. It has to, uh, when you look at it on the outskirts, it just looks like, what's wrong with that? Um, and this is the way Satan always has worked. He is a, he's very smart. He's very deceitful. In fact, in the Bible, it says that when he speaks lies, he speaks his native language. So lying is part of who he is. It's, it's who he is. Like God is love. So that's part of who he is. Same with Satan. who is he's a liar. It's part of who he is. So um, again, please don't shut up because I just said that as well. Hear me out completely. I won't go for too long. Um and as I pull this apart as well. Um, so the other thing that you'll hear from people saying, look, that's your truth. My truth is my truth. Your truth is your truth. Everyone. But again, this is again a, a statement that's come out and of influence of something to deceive you. Because that is, a, a, in one sense, a foolish statement. Why? Because when someone says, listen, your truth is your truth. And, you know, uh, my truth is my truth. And no one can be sure of anything. Um, all you have to say is, is, are you sure about that? Because they just made a, a statement, a fundamental truth. No one can be sure of anything. Your truth is your truth. My truth is my truth. Uh, but what if that's a lie? You're just making a fact again and then telling me that I cannot be standing on uh, that, that, that the truth that I believe is the, the truth. There is no such thing as the, the truth. Anyone's truth is the, the truth. And that's where delusion comes in. That's where these... This uh, problem has come in now where it's gone as far as kids now thinking they were born in the wrong body. So it's a delusion. They believe, well, that's my truth. And it goes as far as other weird stuff. People believing they were born as a cat in a human body. Uh, and these are real people that are harming their bodies now, uh, you know, getting hacked in surgeries to change their bodies and change their teeth and noses and this and that so they can look more like the thing that they think they were actually meant to be. So these delusions are nothing new as well. And it's because that's their truth. That's what they believe. I'm not harming anybody. You're harming yourself. That's the reality. That's what's that's who's getting harmed. You're harming you. You're harming who you're truly meant to be. You're harming yourself from knowing the truth. So let me keep going. And please, again, stick with me. Uh, this is one of the, um, as you can see here, the pictures. Uh, the, so they, they, they sent with the chakras. You see all the flower going up and down, up all the way up, uh, up to the third eye opening. I'll explain this for a second. So that you see this, the, there's a snake there. That's meant to be the Kundalini spirit or the Kundalini meditation is Kundalini, which opens up the chakras and different levels until you get to the uh, third eye and then it opens up. And for those of you that are involved in this stuff, you know 
uh, that that's the case. So again, notice the diagram there, which again, if you guys are involved in this, you would have seen it a lot of times. Um, and watch why there's the, look at this. Why is there a snake all the time? Why is the Kundalini meditation that opens up your chakras to enlightenment a snake? So this is what I want to um, expose now and show you that this Satan is actually really trying to deceive people by making things look like nice and, and um, harmless and everything. But it's actually him hiding in plain sight because there's only one that was called the serpent in the Bible. And that's why he openly mocks. He openly shows off that it's me doing this and these people are falling for it. That's what he does. Our fight and our enemy is the devil. And he was called the serpent and I'll show you. So again, like I wrote here, why is this, why the serpent? Why is the Kundalini spirit that opens up your chakras meant to enlighten you uh, is, is the symbol of the Kundalini that's opening up your chakras and opening up your third eye. Uh, could it be, and you know, it's, it's, and I say it's a counterfeit Christ consciousness because there is a Christ consciousness from the true Christ and there's a counterfeit version. Looks and sounds very good. Like they said, they were saying it's about love and kindness. Well, Jesus, that's why they keep bringing up Jesus, Christ, because he was walking around all about giving love, kindness, uh, and so, but not just that, and peace, um, and to bring us back to God, the divine. But it wasn't just full stop there. There was so much more that he said, and we need to find out what are his teachings, because if he's the one, then we need to know what he completely said, not what they're doing, where they're taking and picking and choosing what they want. And the reason why they're doing that is because they're in deception. These leaders, these gurus, these people that are teaching these things, they themselves could be, again, people that, really believe this because the best people that can deceive you are the ones who are themselves deceived the blind leading people to become blind so then they'll become if you're if you really believe that lie um then you're passionate about teaching it and you will defend it if someone tries to say anything about it because you truly believe it so many of these people again some of them are wonderful people some of them don't know they're deceived and they really genuinely just want to become better people want to connect with god and all that stuff but they are being deceived by the serpent. Um, let me continue. Look at this. This is in the Bible. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. In the book of Revelations in the Bible. Last book of the Bible. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out. The, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan. Notice what he was. He's called the serpent. And so he's very referred to very much in the Bible as a serpent. So same with his demons. They're called serpents as well. Many times they're referred to as serpents. Uh, so that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the world. That's what he does. He deceives the world. He was cast out to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So these angels have become demons now. They're called demons. So these demons and Satan... So, a one, uh, and it was a third of his angels. We don't know how many one third is. Was it a third of a million? Was it a third of five billion? Was it a third of 20 trillion? We don't know how many a third of what. So they're all over the place trying to deceive and do, do Satan's will. And the way they get us confused is because there's so many paths. It creates so many paths, counterfeit paths to come to God. So we're confused, jumping from one de deception to another deception, thinking that we found the truth now. Now I'm, I'm now more enlightened. Now I'm, f I'm more into the truth. But it's many times jumping from one bucket of deception, cup of deception, going to another cup of deception, to another cup of deception. Um, so I always tell people, is listen, follow the Word of God, the Bible. That is not deception. That is the one that's going to lead you into all truth. Because it's got God's words in there, God's ways, God he likes, what he doesn't like. And the Holy Spirit will lead you into the truth and find a place, a church where um, they teach you the Bible. Okay, not traditions and stuff of men. Because it's, like I said, just as, as much as there's counterfeit Christ consciousness going out, and it's not really from true, the true Christ. There's also counterfeit Christian churches. Of course, there's counterfeit beliefs, all the other beliefs other than Christianity our counterfeit beliefs. I'm just being blunt with you because I'm, I'm tired of just pampering and just in case we hurt the feelings of people. But I'm not trying to hurt the feelings of people. I'm trying to uh, expose the lies. And it's factual. You just have to study where these things came from and you'll find easily, again, the serpent behind most of these. Um, even in Christianity, there is 
the big popular organizations of churches that we've known for a long time, Catholic, Orthodox, again, I'm being blunt with you, that also have been infiltrated and were never really the ones that, that God and Jesus actually authored to be on the earth to represent Him. And that's why you'll see a lot of traditions, a lot of uh, even the, the buildings, they, they look so wow. And Jesus was talking about meeting in church, in uh, houses. Um, and, you know, the Bible talks about that. And it was simplicity. Jesus never wore those uh, gowns that they wear and all these, uh, you know, uniforms and stuff like this that they have to wear. And some of the traditions and rules that they've made up. Jesus didn't put that. There is rules and commands that Jesus has put. And that's what we follow and we find them in the Bible. So many times these counterfeit religions and counterfeit beliefs, even in Christianity, are designed to make it harder for us to have connection with the Lord, make it harder for us to have the simplicity of relationship with God and with Jesus. So I'm, I'm not claiming that Christianity has it all perfect, but the Bible is correct and Christianity is true. I'm talking about the Christian brands that have been out there uh, and more and more coming out there. You have to yeah, be careful where you go and, and uh, who you believe even in there. So just read the Bible and anyone that lines up with the Word of God, it's cool. Hang, hang out with them too in the sense of learning from each other. Um, let me continue. Notice this, the satanic 666 hand signal in meditation. One of the main popular move, uh, hand signals when you see it there is that, that one. It's actually a 666 symbol and also an eye. Okay, and uh, it's the all representing the all see eye, all seeing eye, or the eye of Lucifer. Um, so it's symbolism used in witchcraft, also in Satanism, and it's an act of worship or a portal. Symbols that show portals to say to Satan, "This is for you. This is I, I belong to you, or you're welcome here." Things like that, um, and you don't know, but they tell you to do these movements. And um, so again, look at the fingers. It's a six six six. Um, again, you might think, come on, man, this is overboard. All right, let's keep going. I just want you to know the truth, okay? Um, 2 Corinthians 11. This is in the Bible as well. Book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, 14 to 15 says, And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself as an angel into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So again, Satan, like I said before, doesn't come to us as like um, looking like in his evil, like he's evil. He transforms himself as something that is good, as something that is of the light, that is to give you enlightenment. But what he's doing is, as you give into this yoga and meditation and all this kind of stuff that belongs to the Kundalini to open up the chakras and stuff, you're actually not being enlightened. You're being darkened. I made up that word. But what I'm trying to say is you're becoming a place where you're willingly but deceive, you're being deceived into it, but willingly because you're tampering into the spiritual, not in Christ though. You're not tampering into, you're not going to the spiritual through Christ Jesus, the true Lord and the true way, which is found in the Bible and his teachings. But you're going through another way. And in the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone comes in any other way, he's a thief and a robber. So he's talking about coming into the spiritual realm because you can't come into heaven except by him. But he's, in this passage, he says, I am the door. If you come in any way, anyone comes in any other way, so they can come in. But if they come in any other way, they're a thief and a robber. So it's not the Christ that we make up in our image, in our likeness, in the way we think we're going to make him to believe like those, um, like those websites were claiming that you can. It's not about following Christ's teachings or anything like that. They were saying um, it's just about you know the the gist of what he did about looking to love people and be peace and all that kind of stuff. That's what you follow, but forget everything else. That's a fake Christ. So the real Christ. So when they, people are looking to have Christ consciousness with a made up Christ, you can say the same or you know title like Christ. You can refer to Jesus, but if you're not following and obeying his ways, teachings, then it's a false Christ that you are following. And that's designed by them to deceive you because they are deceived themselves, be taking their orders and ways and beliefs from Satan himself, who is the serpent. So we see that, that he transforms himself as an angel of light. So that's why we got to be careful. That's why when people think, what are you talking about? Why are you judging it? Why are you saying so harsh about it? Look what he wants. He just wants us to become more loving, more patient, more tolerant, more kind. Yes, that's what rat poison talks like. 
it makes it look like it's good. There's nothing wrong with it on the top. But once you start feeding into that lie, you start getting poisoned in your spirit, in your soul. You actually will become poisoned and harmed and damaged. And I don't know how far I can go because I've told you I've been in this for a long time. Since 2000 and, and, uh, two, year 2000, I became a Christian. Dwelt, dealt into done different, different things in my past, in my life as well. And dealt with people as I became a Christian and a minister with that um, delved into these kind of things deeper than I ever known. And the things that have happened to them and the way we have to help them and they testify themselves, things that they, the, 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 how much they were deceived and how it affected them spiritually afterwards it doesn't happen immediately. It happens slowly. It's alluring because it has to look like no, there's no harm to it. It's nothing. It's not a big deal. What are you talking about? It makes you look like I am being overboard. You get me? It'll, it, it's, it looks so calm and so um, harmless that people like me that will speak like this, it makes it look like we're just being these evil, bad people that are trying to you know, speak bad about this good thing. But it's not true. It's, it's deceiving you because that's what Satan's tactics is, to deceive. Let me continue. Uh, here's more of the 666 satanic symbology hiding in plain sight. Look at this. This is some of the, the, the actors, famous actors, uh, singers and stuff. Many of them are involved. They actually sold their, their cells to the devil. Notice the symbol, the same symbol as the meditation to and reach enlightenment where it belongs to Satan because they are many of them. Many of them actually worship Satan, give, are given their souls sold their souls to the devil. Some of them are just told through the years um, when they're taking photo shoots, the photo shoot guy actually tells them uh, or one of their uh, managers or whatever because they function within that system as well of the, of the demonic. Put, put, you know, put your eye and do this. You know, put this symbol on your eye with your eye and let me take a picture. So they just do it. They follow the orders. They do it. They think it's nothing. But some of them are actually intentionally have given the soul to the devil. Some of them admitted it in interviews as well, sold the soul. But any of you guys that are listening to me, of you actors and singers, if you have done this, many you are taught also that you can't get out of that once you do it. It's a lie. Satan keeps lying. You can get out of that. You can't sell your soul. It's not for sale. Your soul belongs to God. You understand? So he's lying to you already that you think you were able to do it. It was just a, a ceremony that you did. Because you, you long for things that you probably regret now to have popularity and all this kind of stuff, which in your heart is dying inside anyway. It's, gone, it's not all you thought it was going to be. Um, but you can repent and come to Jesus and he will set you free. So he's lying to you when they say to you that uh, once you do it, that's no you're going back. It's a lie. You can uh, get out of it. And then you please speak out and help other people as well. Let me give you another one. Oh, is that it? Oh, sorry, I had more pictures, but I will continue in a second. Okay, so these again, more of that. There we go. Um, give me a second. Of them doing these symbols, there's other symbols they're doing. Remember, this is also using yoga. All right, so here's uh, another one, guys. Here's uh, Beyonce. That other guy, I forgot his name again, another actor. They do these symbols a lot, um, like I said. And now you also see it that he's not just holding the hands out, but in the other one, he's holding it in front of his eye. And it's to do with um, the all-seeing eye of Lucifer that's also found in the uh, US dollar um, as a symbol. Um, and the triangle. And again, the triangle you will see a lot, even in movies. You'll see that in concerts. You'll see some of these artists that belong to Satan put this triangle um, symbol, the pyramid symbol, because it's representing who they belong to. They'll do the 666 symbol sign on their eyes, everything. They'll do a lot of occult, satanic stuff. You've seen these guys in music awards, in um, in grand openings of bridges, of uh, not bridges, of um, a tunnel. I forgot which country it was, uh, of um, sports grand openings. All these different weird places, Olympics, everywhere, where they'll do satanic rituals and a lot of to do with this symbology and it is not um, it's not a just fashion thing no one walks around saying hey let me take a picture of you and then you put your finger and you do that symbol and you put it on your eye 
um, it's referring to even covering the eye. It's, it's to do with the all-seeing eye again, the, or the eye of Lucifer, which is Satan's old name before he was thrown out of heaven because he lost that name because he became Satan and means opposer of God. So this is uh, just again trying to help you guys. Satan is mocking us because he's showing it in plain sight, hiding in plain sight, and then we're tampering into his stuff and then when you tamper into his stuff you can say well i'm not doing it for that reason i'm not doing it to get into satan or to open up myself to satan he doesn't care when you open up to his stuff when you touch his stuff when you um participate in his, things that belong to him that he invented doesn't matter what he called it kundalini meditation yoga whatever you want to call it when you are tampering into his stuff and participating in his things he participates with you that's how it goes. It's a trade. You touch these things, he touches you. And that's what's going on. And that's why I'm telling you, please get out away from that thing. Stop doing the meditation. Um, you're not opening up your chakras. You're opening up your soul more and more to Satan's possession, to the demonic possession. And he will possess you. And you're not being enlightened. You're not going to see when you're opening up. He's opening up your eyes. He's going to open your eyes up into the spiritual, but into delusions, into using you stronger. Because now, the more you gave yourself to Him, the more He possesses of your soul. In other words, the more He can control you, more than you can control you. That's what happens. That's when full possession. When we've done exorcisms, um, there is people that are fully possessed when they don't. They have no control. They literally pass out, and the demon speaking through them it could be for half an hour, one hour, or whatever. And they literally don't have a clue that their body was being used by the demonic that was in them. Others are not fully possessed and they can um, hear their voice changing. They can see their actions moving, their hands moving and all that kind of stuff, trying to be violent and all that stuff, reacting to the exorcism in the name of Jesus. Um, but they can't control or stop what's happening. So they can, they're aware of it, but they can't stop it. So it's different levels of possession just because of there's different levels of what's been taken over because they gave themselves up to the things like this, like um, opening up their chakras, which is, again, all lies of the reason why you're doing what you're doing, what they tell you you're doing what you're doing, like we read on that website, is lies. It's deception. Now, these guys that wrote that stuff and participate in that stuff and teach this stuff, like I said, maybe they're wonderful people, but they are completely deceived. And that's the best uh, ministers of Satan that he can have, servants of Satan he can have, is those who don't know they're deceived to keep deceiving because they're passionate about what they believe and then they, they keep helping other people. They think they're helping other people get enlightenment, become better, get help. And there is a lot of help within it. There is a, It feels good in areas and blah, blah, blah. And there's a lot of truth within it. So you, feel, you think, ah, oh, it must be good. But that's what I told you about rat poison. It has to be mixed in with good things. It has to be mixed in with some truth as well. So it can make you feel, because it's true that Christ came to give kindness and love, and that's what it's all about. And we need to come connect back into the divine, to go, which is God. Um, so it's all true about that. But the way you get there is where the deception comes in. So that's what I'm saying. Satan brings a lot of truth and then mixes that lie within and poisons the whole thing and then brings us into deception. That's the way he deceived even Eve in the garden. When a serpent deceived Eve, serpent, remember snake, deceived Eve, it was about quoting exactly what God said, but then putting a doubt within it. And then she was convinced to go and eat from the fruit that she ate and corrupted and that which corrupted us. And that's the point. The next bit I want to show you. Oh, let me go again. Here we go. Here's even more. The Illuminati sign, as they call it. This is on the dollar bill. This is on the dollar bill there. And look at him doing it. This is something they do a lot. Even a movie recently was doing this a lot as well, where The Rock was involved in it or Dwayne Johnson. Um, this is not um, by mistake. It's not just a fashion thing. This is on purpose. And it's and look at how it's one eye that he's looking from, showing the all-seeing eye. This is all symbology to show who, who they worship, who they belong to. Um, and also when they're doing concerts and everything like that, is they're doing a ceremony without you realizing they're doing a ritual at the concerts, at the music awards, at whatever, when they're doing a massive show, a music show or whatever, and all this weird satanic stuff's going on, it's because they're doing a ritual right there, a literal satanic ritual to open that place up to the demonic activity to function in a stronger way and take hold of any person they can within that person because they're participating, being in that concert. 
So by being in that concert, it makes them vulnerable to be able to be to, to begin a type of um, targeted by the demonic to start trying to, to steal, kill and destroy them, to start possessing them, to start using them, to give them delusions, to make them completely depressed. And they don't ever know why they're more depressed than ever. And it was just after a concert, after a movie, uh, things like this. And they don't know. They start waking up and it's more and more depression. It's not depression is not a sickness. It's a demonic attack. So that's why you don't know why. When you know why you're depressed or you're sad, it's because there's a reason. You know, let's say uh, someone died that you love. Uh, you know, someone had an accident that you care about or your money is gone. You know, something that makes you sad. That's not a sickness. That's not a depression. It's sadness and that's normal and we get through it. But uh, when you don't know what's going on, it's because there is an actual attack going on to you. So that's why we have to be careful what we give ourselves to. Whatever you give yourself to gives itself to you. Because you gave it. You, with your own will, gave yourself to it. It doesn't matter if you didn't know it was satanic. You still participated in something that belongs to Satan. That's why we have to become aware of what we're participating in. Because in the Bible, it also says that my people are dying, or are being destroyed, sorry, are being destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. So they didn't have to be destroyed. But because they didn't know, they won't read the Bible. They won't educate themselves in the things of God. And what Jesus actually said, they don't read it themselves. Then they let other people tell them what he said or what it's okay, what's not okay. And then they get deceived because of a lack of knowledge, because of ignorance. They still got um, damaged. They still got attacked. They still got destroyed. So that's not God's fault. That's because we didn't know. And I'll finish off with this, guys. Um, some serious statements Jesus Christ claimed about himself to consider. He is, he says, he is, the Bible says this, that he is the true light of the world. In other words, he is the only one that can give you true enlightenment. No one else. That's what he states. That's what he claims. It's no one else. It's not Buddhism. It's not Hinduism. It's not New Age. It's not Christ consciousness. It's not uh, all this uh, Christen. The other guy was talking about. It's none of that stuff. It's only through Christ. And the way it is, is because you follow him. You follow what he said. You open the Bible and you find out from the New Testament, what did he say? What did he teach? And as you submit and obey that, then you are walking in his way, in his will, and in his protection from being deceived. Another one is Jesus Christ said that there is no other way to connect and become one with the one true God except by him. Again, look at the statement he made. Um, which I'm going to read it in a minute. He's, he actually said, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but by me, meaning the God, the Father. He also said that He is the way. I, I actually just mentioned that. So again, look at that. He's saying that He is the only way, the only path, the only one, the only, uh, the, only the Holy Spirit. It's not the Kundalini Spirit, the Holy Spirit uh, that belongs to him that can lead you and Jesus can only lead you to God to be one with God because God is in love with you and wants you to be one with him and he doesn't want you to add him to other things he's either the, the way or you're just making up stuff again and you're putting so be careful of not putting and adding other things to it or taking away what you like or what you don't like he's God this creation you love is because of him the colors you see, the taste buds, the things you taste, it's Him. He's beautiful. He's amazing. The universe. We, there's people that also got deceived to be told that oh, I believe in the universe. The universe is just the creation. It's like saying I believe in the food. The, the food is the creation of someone that cooked it. I want to acknowledge the chef that cooked me this beautiful food. By saying, oh, I love the universe. I want to pray to the universe. I want to speak to the universe. I want to become one with the universe. You're saying I want to become one, one with the created thing instead of the creator. So please um, look into it more. Get away from these things and these lies that they've told you and they're teaching you. Again, some of them are unintentional, some, but some are really, they work for Satan and they act like they're ministers or, or um, leaders that belong to uh, Christ or belong to enlightenment, but they belong to Satan. They dress themselves also as ministers of light, but they're ministers of darkness to lead you into darkness. They're blind leading the blind. So don't let them blind you anymore. Don't let them take away from you anymore. And awaken to the truth because Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. He loves you so much. And one other thing that's been taught is that there is no evil. There is no bad in us. That's not true. There is bad in us. You know that deep inside that we have potential for good and bad. We have negative thoughts and positive thoughts, bad and good. 
and we choose what we give ourselves to every day. And that's why some people have done some evil things in life, like rape, torture, murder, you know, you, you name it. But also lying, stealing, gossip, selfishness, all that stuff is included. And like I said, all of us can choose to, and those people just gave to what is evil, to the bad side of them, more than what the good is. Because when Adam and Eve ate from the fruit, they it was like a disease came in. Think of it as a disease. Just like when we say, oh, I have diabetes because my mom had diabetes and it's in the family, it's generational. They talk like this. Well, the reality is the generational disease that came into us was because of the sin. When they ate from that fruit, sin, think of it as a disease, went into all their blood. So every child they had after that in their DNA, they had also had that corruption within them this disease that makes us want to be selfish and react different you know do do things that are evil it was there so all of us have the potential to give into that corrupted nature or give into what is good and right it's up to us but to truly become uh, one with christ and one with christ consciousness and one with the divine you need to be baptized in water and the bible says you have to repent so acknowledge that you have done wrong We've all done wrong, not compared to one another, but the reality of have, what have I done wrong towards what God says not to do. We've all failed. doesn't matter if one's more extreme than the other person. God's not going to compare you to other people. He's going to look at you and compare to what He said and His goodness and Jesus is, how He is. Did you fall short? Of course, we all have fall short, fallen short. So what Jesus does, once you accept Him and you get baptized, once you, once you uh, accept what Jesus did, then you get baptized. When you get baptized, it says in the Bible, you're getting baptized into his death. So you're, you're disarming the power of the corrupted nature. So we're not bound to it anymore. That's how you actually uh, have Christ in us. You don't just have Christ's divine nature inside of you already. That's not a truth. Again, there was a lie. It already began from a, a false statement that we read on that website. Not everyone has God in them. And not everyone is a child of God, as that website was stating. The Bible says that God is everyone's God, but not everyone's is His children. The ones that are His children is because they have repented from their sins. They admitted that they've done wrong. They accept Jesus' sacrifice, who was the only one who never did anything wrong. He came, He left heaven, came to be born as a human from Mary, the Virgin Mary. And He came and lived here sinless. He never sinned once, so He can give up His sinful, His sinless self to be crucified because that was the payment that was the punishment for sin and he had to be justified and satan was pointing towards that but none of us can pay for the mistakes we've done so jesus is with the love that he had for us and god the love that he has for us they spoke and agreed that this is the way to be done and jesus came and says no one takes my life i willingly lay it down so he gave himself up for us all he was the only one who was sinless and he died and then when he rose again on the third day, because they couldn't keep him down, because he himself never sinned. He took all our sins, went to hell, gave the payment, because that's where sin takes us, hell. Threw the payment down because he paid for it with his own death, as, you know, getting tortured and whipped and bruised and everything. And then when he rose from the dead, he makes the way for us to be able to connect back to God and become one with the divine nature divine with God through Jesus Christ. So this is the actual only way because there was a payment done that no one else has done. No Buddha didn't do that. No Hindu uh, teachers and gurus have ever done that. Islam didn't do that. No one done that. Only Jesus did that because it was the only truth path to go to God. So when we get baptized, we're actually getting baptized into his death. We're also putting to death. That's why we go under the water. We're putting to death the old corrupt nature that had the more strong strength that we were bound by. And when we come up, we, we are accepting and coming into Christ Jesus. It says, whoever has been baptized into Jesus Christ has put on Christ. This is what we've put him in on. This is where we've become a new creation. In the Bible, it says again, that this is when uh, we, we, the old things have passed away. He says, we're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's where you become new. That's where you get connected. And then as you get connected, He gives you His Holy Spirit. And His Holy Spirit uh, trains you. And, and through practice of walking this out, of believing, of removing every doubt every day, of uh, taking you away from this path, 
that's when you get enlightened and, and grow into the divine nature that you are because you are made in God's image and God's likeness. You are made like He is. Now, that doesn't make you God. It makes you children of God. And that's where He says, you, the Spirit in us calls Him Abba, Father. And that's when this happens. It doesn't happen because we already had that. We lost that because of what Adam and Eve did. And because we all come from the generation of Adam and Eve, something had to change that. And it was Jesus who can only do it. So, I, like I said again, it's not that we all have Jesus immediately. We don't have the Christ nature in us already. Uh, we don't have God in us. We're not all children of God immediately. We have to repent of our sins. Come accept what Jesus did for us. Um, then get baptized in water and you'll get baptized in the Holy Spirit and you walk this journey out. You can find out more on uh, the God's Way Center website that's coming up there. Um, you can listen to other messages that I've done before um, in different areas and start growing. You can go on YouTube and start learning more. Uh, you know, start reading up, Start especially open the Bible, read the book of Matthew in the Bible, in the New Testament. Start learning what Jesus said himself. Start finding out for yourself what he said and grow in this truth, guys, and get away from lies. Get away from uh, Satan's little games and deception that he he tries to deceive so many people to steal, kill, and destroy them, to cause them to walk in darkness while they're thinking they're walking in the light. Anyway, hope this helped you. And uh, share it if you think it's going to help other people. Yeah, thank you guys. Bye-bye.